फादर सूरज प्रसाद नाइपोल जन्म 17 अगस्त 1932 ट्रिनिडाड 1950 में नाइपोल इंग्लैंड पहुंचे और उन्नीस तक यूनिवर्सिटी कॉलेज ऑक्सफोर्ड में पढ़ाए उन्नीस नाइपोल की किताब द मिस्टेक मैस्योर प्रकाशित उन्नीस अ हाउस फॉर मिस्टर बिस्वास उन्नीस नाइपोल पहली बार भारत आए उन्नीस एन एरिया ऑफ डार्कनेस उन्नीस द मिमिक मैन उन्नीस इन अ फ्री स्टेट को बुकर प्राइज प्राप्त उन्नीस सौ उनासी बेंड इन द रिवर उन्नीस सौ नब्बे इंडिया अ मिलियन म्यूटनीज नाव उन्नीस सौ नब्बे में ही नाइटहुड से सम्मानित उन्नीस सौ तिरानवे पहले डेविड कोहन ब्रिटिश लिटरेचर अवार्ड से सम्मानित उन्नीस सौ पिचानवे नादिरा अलावी के साथ विवाह भारत अगर एक शिक्षित देश होता और साहित्य और साहित्यकारों की वो जगह होती जो आज हमारे देश में सिर्फ राजनेताओं और सिनेमा के एक्टरों की है तो वी एस नाइपोल को शायद खुदा माना जाता लेकिन भारत में साहित्य की ना वो कदर है और ना ही वी एस नाइपोल को वो सम्मान मिला जो उनका हक होना चाहिए जो मान्यता उनको भारत में नहीं मिली बाकी दुनिया में पूरी तरह से मिली है यहाँ तक कि कईयों का कहना है कि 20वीं सदी के जीवित लेखकों में से इनकी जगह सबसे ऊपर है आई कम बैक टू इंडिया बिकॉज आई वॉन्ट टू अंडरस्टैंड मोर आई नॉट कम बैक फॉर मैजिक आई कम बैक इन फैक्ट टू फेस अट ऑफ पेन टू अंडरस्टैंड मोर एंड आई कम बैक रियली टू लुक फॉर साइंस ऑफ होप रियली नाइपोल साहब नौ सालों बाद भारत आए हुए थे और हमने उनके साथ दिल्ली में एक दिन बिताया इलेक्शन का वक्त था तो हमारी बातें शुरू हुई भारतीय राजनीति से जिसको वी एस नाइपोल ने हमेशा एक अलग नजर से देखा है इस इलेक्शन को हमारे राजनेताओं ने कम्युनलिज्म और सेक्युलरिज्म के बीच एक जंग बना दिया था पर नाइपोल साहब इन मसलों को इतिहास की नजर से देखते हैं well, the the two main religions in the in the subcontinent uh i would say even the word communal should be applied very very carefully uh i mean i've been uh looking at at monuments and i'm amazed in places like belur halebid which are really pretty far south i'm amazed at the ravages on that very confident hindu culture the confidence expressed in the in in those temples and i feel that uh, hindu india the old hindu india was probably much more fatally wounded than people are willing to admit here and i think that uh, hindus withdrew into uh into very small religious shells rejecting the outer world hinduism permits people to do that to say that the world is illusion uh but that was the response of a, of a defeated people i feel that india has been living through a dark age with the washing away of uh, of its old hindu kingdoms as a result of the muslim invasions and i think uh unless this problem is faced very fairly and very squarely by both sides understanding how they've come to be in the subcontinent together how an an arab religion could have such a strong uh following in the subcontinent unless that fact is understood and talked about there probably will be no peace there probably will be no what you call communal understanding do you think that the way they try to deal with it the BJP. by yes they actually say similar things not as not in as civilized a way and not in in as historical a context but basically they are saying that we have to overcome we have to deal with mm-hmm. what was the enslavement of india mm-hmm. by foreigners mm-hmm. we also have to deal with the fact that these foreigners then broke india up mm-hmm. because they weren't satisfied even with having done what they'd done mm-hmm. and it was by inciting that kind of sentiment mm-hmm. that they got the crowds that went to ayodhya mm-hmm. how do you view that 
Well, I probably am not as horrified by Ayodhya as most people. I see it as a... I see that, you know, Babur was no friend of India. Babur had little regard for the people of India, and Babur's building of a mosque there would have been an expression of contempt. So, in a way, if you uh, behave in this way, you challenge hubris, if you're, you're a builder and a conqueror. And when Nemesis catches up with you, a few centuries later, really one shouldn't complain. Naipaul jo kehte hain, wahi baate hain dutwa ke rajnitik pehre dar bhi kehte hain. Lekin yaha Naipaul ka rasta unse alag ho jata hai. Jaha hindutwa ke jhande ke niche chalne walon ka manna hai, ki bharat ki purani sanskriti ko zinda karne se hi ek nai shuruat ho sakti hai. Vaha Naipaul kehte hain, ki ye shuruat, ye renaissance, tab hi sambhav hai, jab hum maan lehen ki wo purana yug khatam ho chuka hai. I feel that uh, when a death occurs, a cultural death, which I feel did occur, more or less, more or less completely, in, 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 in Hindu India, uh, a true revival, a true revival comes about when people understand that the past was really dead, the past is destroyed, painful as it is to acknowledge. It is like, as I said earlier, the Dark Ages in Europe, uh, when there was a strong wish among people to feel that the old world was continuing. The classical world was just going on and on and on. But the Renaissance doesn't come about through that people trying to pretend that the past is going on. The Renaissance comes when people understand that the past is over and things have to be understood. And this is where I think this, this is where, in fact, one, I would probably part company with the political postures of the, B, of, of the BJP, insofar as I understand them. I haven't really gone into the manifesto. I, I would like uh, this much more exhilarating understanding that uh, India is now having a renaissance. The renaissance is actually not a Hindu renaissance. It has come about through the British rule, which introduced India to uh, the ideas of the European Renaissance. I don't think Hindu India had it in itself to generate these ideas about law and institutions and uh, the rights of the individuals and nations. And I don't think that was there. Naipaul ke khayalon, unki kitabon se aksar vivaad shuru huye hain. Shayad isliye ke wo apni baat khul ke kehne se kabhi dare nahi hain. तो जब बातें शुरू हुई भारत के वर्तमान की उन्होंने कहा कि जहां हमको गांधी जी का सम्मान और आदर अब भी करना चाहिए वहीं हमको उनके विचारों पे दोबारा सोचना चाहिए आई थिंक दैट गांधी इन अ वे एन इमेंस फिगर वन मस्ट टॉक ऑफ हिम विद रेवरेंस बट आई डोंट थिंक पीपल हु टॉक अबाउट गांधी हैज एक्ट have actually, many of the people have actually studied what, uh, what he said. His ideas about poverty and spinning, the spinning wheel and things like that, they were historical ideas at a particular moment. They're not universal ideas. नाइपोल साहब कहते हैं कि जब वो उन्नीस में भारत पहली दफा आए तो उनको ऐसा लगा कि इस देश को अपनी गरीबी पे गर्व था और इन पिछले 30 सालों में सबसे अहम तब्दीली यही हुई है कि भारत में जो मध्य वर्ग जो मिडिल क्लास बनी है इनको देश की प्रगति पे ज्यादा गर्व है बजाय कि उसकी गरीबी पर There's a lot of feeling, especially among our politicians, that the middle class in India is completely insensitive to what they still call the real India, and mm. that it's just a vulgar mm. middle class. I think it's extreme folly. They should not uh, do what uh, the Russians did in the, uh, in the 30s, destroy the people who might have been the scene chord of true progress and true uh, feeding of the masses and true upliftment of the people. It comes, movement comes from the middle class. It doesn't come from the matchstick people. The middle class produce the wealth, the middle class produce the ideas, the humanity, the sensibility that can deal with, uh, with the problems. Not, it doesn't come from people who are so depressed and deprived and outside it. And after all, this middle class here has been, it has taken about 150 years to produce, you, to destroy it now. 
would be suicide. The middle class should be cosseted, the middle class should be encouraged, and it should be expanded and expanded and expanded. That is where the, where the, where the hope lies. Naipaul sahab apni kitabon ke bare mein khud baat karna pasand nahi karte unhone humko sujhav ye diya ki unke kaam ke bare mein kisi aur se baat ki jaye i very seriously believe that i can critically substantiate the case i think and began to do so at delhi university and at the lucknow seminar recently that naipaul is the most at least the most important writer of the diaspora and has written one or two of the best books of the late 20th century and he has always found new ways of doing things and in that i would compare him to the great figures of the european tradition naipaul's method as well as his purpose in inquiring into a place is to lay it bare is to give you an insight not to confuse you or to cover up uh the truth with lies naipaul sahab ko humne bhartiya sahitya bharat ki adhunik sanskriti ke bare mein poocha kya hamara sahitya hamare cinema mein koi naya pan hai aur agar nahi hai to kyon nahi you shouldn't run yourself down too much i think you do pretty well and because your cinema is extremely original it's operatic i know but uh, uh it's very original so original that it it goes to many other countries with the writing the flaw here is the flaw that occurs in the countries of europe as well uh it is mimicry where people are mimicking other people so the form is a borrowed form and uh the writers here think that to write they have to mimic the established writers you speak only of writers writing in english or of i'm speaking of what well, yes principally of, of of that yes i don't know about i don't know so much i've just read some stories by um, princhan they were rather good they were rather good but there's been nothing really since even in the indian languages i think that uh, writing again such as you, we want now depends on a good industrial society uh it sounds strange to say but writing is not just a matter of spirit writing is a very requires very physical things printing presses a book is a physical object it requires a bookshops it requires newspapers to criticize uh it requires a large educated population who and this educated population need books because they need to understand what's happening around them because living their own restricted lives home office or factory or wherever they have no means of grasping what's happening around them the larger picture and they look to writing for this uh and i think this is only just beginning to occur in india i think you should not despair yet things can't happen too quickly it's a process of uh, it's a process it's a process in the in the 30 years that you've been coming to india since you first came you first came in 62 62 right? yes so it's it's more than 30 years it's 36 years yes. 36 years yes what are the things you've seen that have given you hope that there will eventually be a, a renaissance of some sort Uh, what gives me hope of course the quality of the people i i meet i mean uh uh one must be brutal i mean uh, middle class people educated people people who want to talk there were not many of them in 1962 uh there are people quite removed from one and one's concerns and this is a growing uh number of people this this number grows I think every month every every year and I think this uh this growing educated and extremely talented middle class you have developed here will look after you quite well in the years to come Yes I for not great honor of the dear 
کوئی دو تین سال پہلے وی ایس نائپول کی شادی ایک پاکستانی محلہ نادرہ الوی سے ہوئی نائپول صاحب کی ملاقات نادرہ سے لاہور میں ہوئی جہاں وہ اپنی نئی کتاب پر ریسرچ کرنے گئے تھے I will come back from office, you know, being a columnist and being a writer there I was so depressed at what I saw was the situation in my country so depressed about the political situation and so tired also, you know and I wasn't coming to this uh, American Council General's dinner and I decided, oh well, I'll go and I met a fellow journalist there, whom you know also who asked me, do you know V.S. Naipaul? so I thought, oh God, what a silly question, do you know V.S. Naipaul? I said, of course I do he said, he's here I said, don't be stupid he said, yes, he's here I said, where? he said, oh, hang on a minute, I'll introduce you there he is and I saw this man, very tired man actually then and a very I had this impression of great... I looked at him and I'll tell you something which I hope is not misconstrued. When I looked at him, I myself was on such a, a loose end. I saw... I felt such pity. I don't know why. Because basically also I walked up to him and I felt that I was in, in the presence of something very good. Good. But yet there was a kind... I felt sorry. And maybe I was feeling sorry for myself, you know. And I looked at him and he was having his plate. He had very little food. And he was, this is what I call his Brahmin instinct, very little food put away. And he was playing with it. And I said, are you V.S. Naipaul? And he said, yes. I said, can I kiss you? And he said, I, and before he could answer, I leaned forward and kissed him on his cheek. And he looked at me and said, I think we should sit down. When he's writing, he is... Um, he becomes completely a recluse in the sense that he becomes very secluded and he doesn't talk and he doesn't want uh, he doesn't want to deal with the outside world he would like to use uh, me as a springboard like he'll come and he would talk but he doesn't want me to reply because he's churning out his thoughts and I'm just supposed to listen and I've got used to it now because I know that he's framing something or he's considering something and he needs me there. He needs, he needs someone that he trusts. He needs someone whose judgment he respects. And uh, then he just wants someone to listen to him. Bharatiya Sanskriti ki aaj kal humare raj neta aur sarkari afsar badi badi baatein karte hain. Har dousre din koi na koi hamko yaad karata hai ki humari sanskriti khatre mein hai. مائیکل جیکسن کے بھارت آنے کے خلاف مورچے کیے گئے اور مس ورلڈ کانٹیسٹ جب بینگلور میں ہو رہا تھا تو اس کو بھی بھارتی سنسکرتی کا اپمان کہا گیا دوسری طرف جو ہماری پرانی سنسکرتی کی کچھ بچی کچھ یادگاریں ہیں وہ دھیرے دھیرے تباہ ہو رہی ہیں نائی پول صاحب اس بات سے بہت دکھی ہیں It's very very upsetting both what I saw in Bhuvaneshwar and what I saw in, uh, in Hampi at Vijay, the capital of the great great kingdom of Vijayanagar. One of the glories of, uh, of India was the very wide main street of Hampi, which is the capital of the Vijayanagar kingdom. I, I really can't tell you how wide it was. It was paved, it was very wide, and when I saw it in 62, it was a glorious thing, one of the glo most glorious things, I think, in Asia. I went there now to, to look at it. It's destroyed. It doesn't exist. I wouldn't have thought it possible that something so grand could have been destroyed. If you destroy your monuments, you will have nothing to show for the past. And we have a very good example. You know, you, your neighbor here, Pakistan, there are no Hindu monuments. It's as though Hinduism and Buddhism never were there. So it is possible to wipe out the memories of the past. And again, in the name of continuity, you destroy the past. It's a funny thing because, you see, in Pakistan, it was in the name of, uh, of change, of declaring the past dead. Yes. That they did what they did. And, yes. And they cut their roots off completely. Yes. In India, it's in the name of preservation that they're doing this. So it's a, it's a peculiar kind of dichotomy because actually yes. what they're trying to do yes. is to preserve the past. No, I don't think they're trying to preserve it, you know. I think it would be better understood if, in fact, we understood these were great monuments. 
uh, people who come here at the moment can't understand them, but they will in time, they will in 20, 30, 40, 50 years, understand the glory of this place. And that understanding of your past is a very high form of religion to me, uh, rather than, you know, honoring a deity, which you could honor in many other places. And the same thing I fear is going on in Bhuvaneshwar, those great, great temples. Bhuvaneshwar was so destroyed when the Mughals broke through at the end of the 16th century. And now the final act of vandalism is by the Pandas. These things are not going to live much longer. And we just have the dust. Whenever I see the red flag flying over an old ruin uh, in, in Orissa, my heart sank, really. I didn't think this was continuity, because I know that those things were abandoned for a long time and knocked about. And these people have just crept in and built their shoddy little houses and uh, wish to exact money from people. I think it's rather awful. It's bad. It's bad. But probably one is talking to... No one is listening. I want to ask you one final question, and a personal one. What is it about India that draws you? Well, I suppose my religion is, is, is uh, being Indian. <laughs> it's absurd. <laughs> but uh, that's my background, and uh, I've always, you know, I've, I've had to, I just have to explore this in various ways. That's all I can say, really. <laughs>